My good friend Anthony Famia is joining me from Maker and Munger at Paran Markets. You are the cheese king. I love all types of cheeses and you've taught me so much about it. So I thought, why not get you here to make the ultimate cheese dish? Yeah. That would be cheese fondue. Cheese fondue. <laughs> I mean, every year what I do for my birthday is I invite 15 people around yeah. and we call it cheese palooza and we start <laughs> with cheese on a plate. Yep. Yeah. Fondue oh. and then the ultimate mac and cheese. Oh my god! But the fondue is what puts everybody to sleep. That's my heaven. <laughs> well, nice. let's get started. Yeah. What type of cheeses do we so use for a good fondue at it's home? It's crucial. It's not just cheddar, Gruyere, Emmental, anything. Yep. You want to make proper fondue. You want proper Gruyere. So we've yep. got Comte Marcel Petit, so from mm -hmm. the Jura Mountains of France. Mm -hmm. and this one for us is what we need for sweetness. Okay, I'm gonna have a taste of each Go individual one, so I know what's going on. We then got a little bit of aged Gruyere that's been aged in a cave in Fribourg in Switzerland. Yep. So this is for the texture. It's mm -hmm. what's going to give us that awesome, awesome stringiness and velvety texture. Okay. Mm -hmm. I like Notice that Notice that distinct flavour difference there. Mm -hmm. mm. And then the creme de la creme is Letiva, which is an ancient style of Gruyere from that same region. Yep. But its methods of making and maturation are mm. so different that it just it just blows your mouth like how much flavour comes through. So that's the flavour of our fondue is that one cheese. Nice one. And so we're going with about 250 grams of each yep. corn flour. Mm -hmm. So corn flour binds everything. Okay. Now traditional recipes have asked for the corn flour to go with a shot of kirsch mm -hmm. and then into the fondue. Okay. Um, but what you can do is just shot that kirsch yourself mm -hmm. just before you start making the fondue <laughs> just to give you a little bit of courage. It warm you up. That's it. Warm to you start up. stirring the fondue. <laughs> exactly. And you just want to add the corn flour to the cheese okay. and that just helps it all bind perfectly well together. Right. All right. What's next? All right. So next we're just going to smash one of the little garlic cloves yes. and rub that into our pot. So two reasons. That gives us a little bit of lubrication as well as flavour. Mm. So that goes into our pot. We then add our wine. Alrighty. So. And traditionally, what type of wine would you use? Dry white. A dry, dry white. white. Yeah. Okay, nice. Yeah. Now the crucial part here is low to medium heat. You okay. don't want it to come to boil too quickly. Because this could split, right? Oh, the fats can split. So 100%. by having it at that consistent temperature is yeah. what we're after. Yeah. All right. I'm really happy with that right now. It's just mm -hmm. a few little bubbles. The steam is starting to rise. So yep. let's get the cheese in there. Yes. Now it's important to be patient with this and do it a handful at a time. Right. And figure eight motion, scraping yep. both the sides and the bottom of the pole. Mm. That way it's just a uniform melt. So once that is melted in, yeah. you go for another handful? Yes. Yeah. And how long does this process take of mixing, melting and adding more cheese? About 10 to 15 minutes there. Okay. Perfect. Not too long. Yep. And so while we're stirring this, mm -hmm. let's talk about our charcuterie and accompaniments that we've got. Yes. So uh, some bread, so croutons, fresh mm -hmm. bread. Yeah. People like to toast the bread, but I like to keep it fresh because it absorbs all the flavour of the mm. cheese and you get that hint of wine flavour through it. And we're going with something a little bit different away from tradition here. So I love to roast some parsnips at home. Mm -hmm. I believe that has so much more flavour than your average carrot or potato. It's like a combination of both for me. Mm. Um, for the traditionalists out there, we've got pickled onions and cornichons. Uh, we've then got crostini, uh, which is what we want to wrap the prosciutto with. Yes and dip away there. So all those people that need their extra protein from their animals, <laughs> uh, that's what that's for. Uh, we've got the awesome dry-aged chorizo too that you don't need to cook first. Okay. And that one you can leave a little bit longer in the pot so yep. that the cheese sort of helps cook that chorizo a little bit further and releases a little bit of paprika that's used in that chorizo just to sort of impart more flavour onto the fondue. Amazing. And then you can play around with your seasoning. So what we've got here is a dried oregano and we've got uh, Espelay pepper, which is from the Basque region of France and Spain. All of this is sounding very appetising. I'm going to finish draping this prosciutto onto the plate, chop up the chorizo and we'll wait for this cheese to melt. Like a lot of things in the 70s, people kind of left their fondue pots in the past, like flares, <laughs> disco lights, etc. Yeah. So if you are looking for a fondue pot, any great homeware shop here in Australia should have them back now. Yeah. You want cast iron uh, or spring metal is really, really nice. good too. All right, so this is ready to go. So I'm yeah. just going to turn it off its low heat mm -hmm. and going to pour it in. Okay. All right, you ready? Yeah, I am. Oh, that's amazing. It smells good. <gasps> 
Now, see how silky smooth that texture that is? Yeah. That's what we want yeah. in our fondue. If it's cluggy, if it's sort of starting to harden up, mm -hmm. a really good whisk yeah. um, just to bring it back to life. Because So what's happening is all the cheese proteins, they want to make a new cheese. And we don't want a new cheese. We want liquid, hot, molten cheese. Yeah. Awesome. So this is ready right now. Yeah. If you want to take the flavour bomb to the next level, let's add a little bit of our spices to sure. it. Sure. Okay. So grab me that dried oregano and the espalade pepper. Yep. Do you want me to take that lid off? Yeah, go for it. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Nice. So is this a modern twist, would you say? Yeah, there's yeah. a little bit of an Italian and a Turkish twist to a <laughs> French and Swiss fondue. Yep. Uh, so you just added the espalade pepper. Mm -hmm. So it's going to give you the flavour of the chilli without the heat. Nice. And I love that. All right, let's have a taste. How are you going to start this? I'm going to go probably the bread to start, yep. just to see the flavour of the cheese before I add anything else to it. All right, I'm going to follow. And after you. All right, dip it in. Oh my gosh, look at that cheese. A little morsel of joy right there. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> wow. You can really taste the complexity of the cheese and how special the cheese is. Put with a dry white, and those spices are unbelievable with it. That is very satisfying. Thank you for making fondue so popular again. <laughs> it's just a delight. The theatre of eating, this is what it's all about. It. It's just the beginning. Exactly. Where shall we go next? I'm going to go a little parsnip. All right, Cheese I'm going to go chorizo. <laughs> Cheese. <laughs> nice one. <laughs>